Kirsten Northfield with WCU Department of Entomology. Um, I manage the diagnostic lab and that's where we are right now. Um, and I'm here to discuss how to send samples to me the proper way so that I can diagnose in the best optimal way possible. Um, but the number one thing we need to do first is explain the registration form. When you send me your sample, it has to be in the box or the padded envelope so that I know what you want me to diagnose and all the information behind that sample being submitted. So um, you can find our registration form at the WASBA.org website or the WSU APIS website. I'm going to kind of explain the registration form um, so that you know what to fill out and what's important. Um, so first, the demographic information is very important. Um, which would be your name, your address, your phone number, and stick your email address on there if you have that available, because if you'd like me to submit your data that way, it may be a little bit easier for you. And then put down the name of your local beekeeping association. Um, background information on beekeeping operation. That means I need to know the number of colonies overwintered in the last year, the estimated losses, the prominent strain of bees, the origin of stocks, um, and all chemicals and antibiotics used. And this is very important because I'm not the only one that's going to be looking at these samples. Um, there may be another person an analyzing the samples for chemical treatments. Um, so that's very important. Um, and have you seen symptoms in your operation of CCD? And anything additional that you want to put down? Um, and then also, the next section of the registration form is the sampling information. And it's really important for me to know when you took those samples. So not when you sent the sample to me, but when you actually went out to the colony and scooped your bees up into the container so that I know when they were taken. And the number being submitted for analysis. Um, when you send me your samples, um, I can't diagnose every single sample. So if you have 500 colonies, I won't be able to diagnose 500 samples. So um, on the bottom of the first page of your registration form is the recommended um, number of colonies to submit. So um, if you have one to 10 colonies, you can send one sample, for example. Um, so look at the bottom of that. That's the optimal way of doing things, so it makes it easier for me, and um, I can get you your data faster. So on the second page of the registration form is the field sampling information. So this um, tells you what to use when you go out, um, how to do it, how to scoop up the bees, um, and where to send it to. So you're going to want to send it to the Bee Diagnostic Service. So that will come to me. Again, the registration form is very important, so I know everything about the history of the samples that you're submitting. Okay, next we're going to talk about the most efficient way um, to send samples to me. So I have three examples here of um, great bottles um, or honey jars that you can send me your bees in. So this is just a simple Nalgene bottle, and that's always good. Um, and this is actually um, a makeup or um, container, and this is fine too, as long as you can send me whatever you have in your house is the bees can fit into it and it's easy for me to get into um, and it's airtight and like I said you can use a honey jar as well because it's airtight um, a bad example of what to send me is something like this just a regular kitchen food storage um, plastic bin because it's easily opened and it's not very tight these things are used just for, you know, a couple dinners maybe, but it doesn't work when it, you're sending it in the mail. So it will easily pop open or get squished in the mail and your bees, you know, can come out. So that makes it difficult. Um, and so when you go out and sample in the field and you get bees, so I've skipped to the point where you've already collected your bees, um, you're going to have dry, dead bees at this point. So you're going to be putting them into a container with alcohol. So we're going to use this container. I need about half a cup to a cup of bees. Now, if your colony is not doing well, I understand if you can't give me that many bees. But it's better for my analysis and more accurate data-wise if I can get half a cup to a cup of bees, if you can do it. Um, so here's your bees. This is about half a cup to a cup. And what we're going to do is put alcohol inside the cup and you're going to submerge the bees with the alcohol. I'm 
Now I need it covering about an inch across the line of bees because if it's sent to me like this, for example, and the bees are completely up to the top, um, they've soaked up all of the alcohol, and in this cup in particular, there's hardly any alcohol in it. And if the bees soak up all the alcohol, then the bees are rotten, and it's not, um, your data will not be quite as accurate. So it's really important, as I said, to, um, to have it filled like this. The next step is to put the lid on really tight so none of the alcohol comes out when it's shipped to me. And what I prefer if you have it available is to wrap wax paper around the lid. That's just to reinforce it. So that's about perfect. And the next step, you can also use a urine sample bottle. And these are actually really good. You can get them for 50 cents at your local pharmacy. Um, but they usually have this tape sticker on the outside. Um, and what you can do is write the date that you sampled on it. So not, again, not the date that you're sending it to me, but the date it was actually sampled. Um, and then the colony number. And then your name on it, on the side of it. Now on the lid, I'd like you to put the colony number. Um, so, and then what we'll do is take a little piece of paper and use a pencil and write your initials and the colony number on it. So that's all you need to do. You just need to get a little piece of paper. It doesn't have to be perfectly cut like this. You can just rip it off and write with pencil your initials and the colony number. And you'll stick it inside with the submerged alcohol. That way I have all the information I need when you send me your sample. Okay, so we went over the registration form and what to put the sample in and how to pack it. Um, but now I'm going to show you what I need you to send it in. So you can send it in a padded envelope if it's one sample, one or two samples. Um, otherwise, use a box. So this little box is a good example. Um, and then here we have your sample reinforced with wax paper. And so that the sample isn't rocking around in the mail, we just kind of wrap it around in bubble wrap. Stick it in the box like so. Obviously you can use packing peanuts or whatever you have available, newspaper. Um, and then just shut the box. Grab some packing tape. Put an address on it and boom, I have your sample.